Uh, no matter where you are or what time it is, I'm glad you're joining me today for this Lunch and Learn. And uh, you know what? It's 12.01. I vote that we get started. So over the next 30 minutes, I'm going to introduce two new features of News for You Online and offer some ideas for activities you can use with your students in a physical and or virtual classroom. So pull out your PBJ or your BLT because it's time to lunch and learn. Ah, let me share a different screen here to get us started. That works. Okay. Now, it's possible that we have some viewers with us today who've never used NewsView Online, so I'll show everyone where and how to log on and share a few facts before we dive into the first new feature. Now, you can get there by typing newsforyouonline.com in your browser search or by clicking on the News For You Online tab on the right side of the New Readers Press dashboard, and that's where I am today. Here it is, newreaderspress.com, and here the News For You Online tab. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on this and get us there. And again, you can simply type News For You Online into your uh, browser search and get there as well. So here we are. News for you print subscribers have free limited online access. Not everybody is aware of that, although we do uh, we do put that uh, the uh, password and the URL in the upper right corner of the paper every week. Um, not everybody, you know, some people just gloss over it. Uh, users can read and listen to the two front page articles, and here's one, pay to stay laws, and the second one on the front page of this week's paper is a loyal royal, right, and they can do the um, associated online exercises every week. They can participate in the weekly poll, which is uh, a poll related to one of the first uh, one of the two front page stories this week says, do you think pay to stay laws for inmates are fair? Well, I don't really know a lot about that. Haven't read the article. I'm going to vote. I'm not sure. Vote. Here we have the results. That's kind of neat. You can use this in a lot of different ways. Um, and uh, they can also, in addition to participating in the poll, do the weekly interactive crossword puzzle, which is great feature. And the word search puzzle, which uses the weekly vocabulary words, two other great features. And there's a lot more to do every week, a lot more. But to enjoy all of the features on the site, you will need an online subscription. News for You articles are based on reports from the Washington Post and Associated Press News Services. All content is thoroughly reviewed to ensure accuracy, low-level readability, and appropriateness. Seven new stories are posted each Wednesday at 12.01 Eastern Standard Time. Three of those stories are at reading level three to four. That's like a, a high beginning level for English language learners. And four stories are at uh, levels four to six, or like a low intermediate. Okay, enough background. On to our first new feature, the weekly news roundup, which made its debut last week on Labor Day. The news roundup is a bonus for online subscribers only. I'll repeat that. The news roundup is a bonus and it's for online subscribers only. Instead of a traditional article with one topic, however, this is a collection of three or four short breaking news items. It'll appear as the featured story at the top of the page every Monday, where you see uh, the front page story now from this week. Uh, you'll see instead on Monday, it'll post here before it. Um, and it'll post there at the top uh, every week, except for the four weeks that we take off for the holidays, and that's Thanksgiving week 
and the last three weeks in December. And then it will be bumped down to the bottom story position on Wednesday when the new regular issue is published. And I'll show you where that is. Here we go, scrolling down, seven regular stories and the, our news roundup at where it will stay until the following Monday, next Monday, when our new roundup will post. This week's article, Queen Elizabeth II dies, new UK prime minister, and new fast food workers law. So let's click on this and find out together how it's the same as the other weekly stories and how it's different. Click, and here we are. So. The first thing we see here is the photo and underneath it, a caption. No difference here, uh, same as our other stories. A vibrant photo that could be used to introduce the story topic, um, new vocabulary, ask and answer basic questions to more advanced questions, uh, and also to launch discussion, right? Engage our learners. I love starting with photos. Uh, a picture does paint a thousand words. Now it's just a matter of, for our English language learners, teaching them those words. And uh, for our other learners, you, uh, you know, uh, showing them how to use those words in reading and writing activities, as well as listening and speaking. So for those of you who news for you, news for you online, you, you know and love these, uh, on to our next feature. As we scroll down, uh, this next feature looks the same to our users at first glance. News View Online articles come with full audio. As you see here, hear the whole story. Uh, so users can choose to listen to the whole story by just clicking here, and then they can follow along uh, as they listen to improve their reading fluency. Um, or they could just listen and use it as a listening comprehension activity or note-taking practice at, at higher levels of abilities. Different ways that you could use that uh, audio feature. Learners can also listen to just a single sentence or caption and this, you know, to work on pronunciation uh, or for reading fluency or speaking fluency. The audio is great for independent study and practice. Students can listen and repeat as much as they like, uh, especially for our English language learners. You know, it also strengthens their listening skills as they can't rely on visual signals like facial expressions and body language. And here is our first difference. Now, for the seven traditional stories, the audio alternates between a female and a male voice, and they're provided by real voice artists uh, in the studio every week. However, for the Roundup article, the voice is computer generated, or what many refer to as AI, right, for artificial intelligence. And I actually like this new feature, and for two reasons. For one thing, the AI voice speaks faster than the real voice artists, presenting a bit more of a challenge. And for another, I, it, nowadays it seems like everything talks to us using AI. I mean, from the, from the GPS uh, when you're driving to Siri or Alexa, and you know, even the Washington Post and other national news organizations have started using it as well. So I think it makes perfect sense to help our English language learners get used to that. And it's a nice blend. We have the, the real voices for the seven regular stories every week. And then we have this as an alternative as a, and as a bonus, but it's the AI. Let's have a quick listen just, just to hear the differences. I'm gonna go back to one of our regular stories. Let's go to a loyal royal. An abused beagle finds a happy home Scroll down and get a sentence here that's fairly longer. She was adopted by Britain's Prince Harry and his wife, Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. See what I did there? I just mouse over a sentence and I click. Mia first came to the Beagle Freedom Project, BFP, in Los Angeles. And that's our female voice artist. Now I will go back to our homepage, and I'm pretty sure this one is 
our male voice artists. Peter Stay Laws, are they fair to former inmates? Let's see. Teresa Beatty got out of prison 20 years ago. She served two years in prison for drug crimes. Right? And lastly, let's compare and see how our AI is different. It honors the histories, cultures, and contributions of people whose families are from Mexico, Spain, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. Yep, it's a little faster. And yeah, I can tell that it's AI, you probably can too. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's average or a little above average. And I think that that's a really good feature uh, because it, it's just going to help people get used to that because that's what we're gonna be hearing more and more as time goes on. Okay, now on to the text. Just like the traditional stories, uh, users can choose from three font sizes. We have the normal size that you see here, and then here, change text size. I'll click on a plus, and here's our large size. And one more, this is what I call our broad side of a barn. I don't see a barn size, and that's the setting that I use, me and my trifocals. <laughs> the largest could be a big help for visually impaired people like me, but you know, also for use in class on a smart board. Uh, or for those using a smaller device like a smartphone, because the news view online is accessible on not only laptops, but uh, 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 tablets and, and, uh, and cell phones as well. So great feature to have is the, the, the three text sizes. Uh, continuing down into the story itself, Key vocabulary words are shown in bold blue text. As you see here, heritage is one of our vocabulary words. The definition and part of speech pop up when you roll the mouse over them, as I'm doing here, right? It's a noun and then it's definition, right? Now they're not included in the weekly vocabulary list that's here, let me scroll down. And this is our weekly vocabulary list, the same mouse over feature with a pop-up uh, that has all of the vocabulary words from our seven regular articles. But again, it is included in the article itself. So a minor difference there. And scrolling down, oh, I'm gonna stop here. Here's a cool bonus. From time to time, you'll run across orange text in the articles, and that means it's a link. Let's see where this one takes us. Celebration. What's this part about? This is National Hispanic Heritage Month. So let's see. Click. And this takes us to this homepage for the National Hispanic Heritage Month, where there are exhibits and collections, audio, video, images for, uh, for teachers section with links. I assume I'm going to click on it and find out here. Yep, all kinds of resources for instructors. So a rich resource, just an extra bonus. And we do stuff like this from time to time in our, in our uh, stories. Okay, scrolling down, scrolling down, more vocabulary, down to the very bottom. My next thing that I want to bring up is at the bottom of every News View Online article, including the Roundup, readers can leave comments. And this is a, fe a feature that a lot of people like to participate in. It's a way for them to, whether anonymously or using a nickname or their real name, make a comment that's going to be read internationally. We have readers in, in Japan, in India, in, in, in Canada, all over the world. Uh, so they can leave a comment. Uh, and um, that's a great feature because it allows them to express their opinions on the topics, you know, from as simple as I really liked this story to maybe a controversial issue. They can also get practice using the keyboard and honing their writing skills. So really neat feature there, leaving a comment. And did you notice as we're scrolling down? I did. Yep. More orange text. Sometimes we provide links to related articles from past issues. This is a great opportunity to work on researching and citing information from multiple sources, 
or you know what, maybe just to encourage independent reading. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the news for you archives later. I think I'll have time. Now I'm going to scroll up to the top to show you another feature found in every news for you online story, and this to provide uh, just follow activity, uh, follow up activities to the article. And here it is: article exercises. Once you click on an article, you'll see here to the right of it, article exercises. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Click. Here it is. Now sometimes these interactive exercises are. Um, are, are true false, or as in this case, um, multiple choice, right? Uh, but other times learners have to fill in the blanks or unscramble a sentence. Let's see what they are for our roundup article. This first one, identify the correct part of speech, decide, that sounds like a verb to me. And as you can see here, we get immediate feedback, right? Going to the next, Oh, a different one. Put the sentence in order. They say it will costs raise for the customers or they say it will raise costs. Well, I'm not list dexic. I'm going to go with that one and I'm right again. Next. Yes, I said list dexic. Let's do one more. Oh, this is actually, this is a good point. Here's a fill in the blanks where we have to type in the answer. The national anthem will have the words. Now, I don't know what that is. So, um, some of the exercises stress close reading and citing evidence, and that means that the students will have to return to the story in order to answer the questions. So clicking on right here, return to the article, it will open our story back up in a new browser tab. And then students can toggle back and forth between the questions and the, and the passage as needed, which is really handy. So um, what was that? It was a question about the national anthem. You know what? Now I'm gonna scan, skim for the answer. National anthem, and here it is. We'll have the words, God save the king. I'll bet that's what we're looking for. Let's go back and, oops, did I? Oh, I already clicked off it is what I did. But yes, God save the king is the answer. So we can go back and forth toggling. And those are the article exercises. Okay. So one more quick point that I should make before we move on to our second feature. And that is the weekly teacher's guide. So I'm going to scroll down here. And there it is. This week's teacher's guide. And I'll go ahead and click on that. Uh, <clears throat> so. The weekly teacher's guide for news for you and news for you online provides an additional activity and discussion question for each of the seven regular stories. In fact, as you see here, there's a full lesson plan included for one of the two front page stories every week. Here, the learning objective, before the reading, check comprehension, discussion questions, lots here. There's also a guide that indicates the reading level for each article and an answer key. And then as you scroll down, you see story by story, an exercise and a discussion question. And that's our teacher's guide. The weekly news roundup story is not referenced in the teacher's guide. And the reason for that is because it has to be created in advance in order to meet print deadlines. So for the record, the roundup story will be written at reading level four to six every week. The roundup story, reading level four to six. And if it's additional exercises and activities you're looking for for the roundup, don't sweat it because up here under tips for teachers, you'll find scores of great ideas and I'm not exaggerating. Tips for Teachers has a library of activities you can use with your students. And these activities are actually arranged by category as you see here, looking for comprehension activities, expressing opinions, grammar, graphic organizers, inferring, listening, maps, news literacy, note-taking, and more and more and more. The list goes on and on. You can even um, download a list to see which college career readiness 
ELA and K-11-12 standards can be addressed with news for you. That's a downloadable PDF that you can print. Uh, so lots of features there under tips for teachers, just a really great resource. All right, so now for our second feature, and that is the 2022 voting guide. For clarity, we did have a 2020 voting guide, uh, but we have fully updated this. All of the data, all of the information uh, has been updated so that it is relevant for the uh, 2022 voting season. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and show it to you because I love the way this resource is put together. There are 10 informative pages each page is manageable and easily a lesson or more in itself. Here's the first page, page one. And as you see here, let's see, recent patterns in voting, who votes, voting limits, groups once barred from voting. And what I'm seeing here are opportunities for working with analytics, working with percentages, maybe making comparative graphs right? History, right? We could look more further into uh, groups that were barred from voting and why. Second page, reasons to vote, right? Getting reasons why people should vote. And below it, a graph showing reasons given for not voting. This is a percentage of registered non-voters from the 2020 voting season. We could use this uh, for uh, you know, forming a text-based argument or maybe an opinion-based argument, giving you know, pros and cons to voting. What's your opinion? You know, wh what, what opinions were shared in the, in, the, in the chart, in the graph that you see here? Third page, what we vote on. What does it say here? National offices, state offices, local offices, ballot measures. All right. Um, so recognizing government offices, right? And we could make a chart here, look into the various offices, the different levels. Page four, choosing a president, beginning primary elections and caucuses, national conventions, general elections, the electoral college, I see here the election process. And when I think process, I think of, well, processes. So, <laughs> you know, this is a great opportunity to show process. And we might do that by, um, uh, by a sequence or um, you know, a flow chart. Page five, political parties, major parties, third parties, non-party candidates, identifying those. You know, whether you're you're leading a civics class, um, maybe it's citizenship. Um, it, it maybe just social studies, whatever the reason. Great information here. And then below it, getting informed. Here's some ways to get informed. So, you know, critical thinking activities here, um, identifying reliable sources. I, it's just so much that you can do. Next page, page so what to watch for in a debate before, during, and after. Wow. Okay political campaign ads, thinking about the message. So um, on these pages, what to watch and listen for, um, identifying the issues, separating fact from opinion. I would take a, an opportunity here to have students create, or I could use uh, a chart that I've already created, um, a KWL chart, right? What do I know about the issues? What do I want to know? Right? And then finally, what have I learned from watching, listening to these debates? Great opportunities. Next page, registering to vote, reasons, deadlines, how to register. If English isn't your main language, instructions, choosing a party, proof of registration, casting your vote, polling places, arriving to vote, what you'll need, voting by mail, and using the voting equipment, scan systems, direct recording electronic systems, and paper ballots. Gee whiz. I mean, 
so how to register, how to vote. I would I would uh, work on writing procedures, steps. Again, flowchart comes to mind. And on the final page, it's, it's all about voting vocabulary. You could create questions, exercises, and writing opportunities using the vocabulary words provided here. Fantastic resource. And again, this is a downloadable PDF. So you could print these off for your students. You could do this together, you know, virtually or in class, you know, in class, in person, or synchronous instruction, but just great opportunities there. And, you know, I, I said that I would try and come back to the archives, the archive stories. You could use the archives to find past stories related to voting and to this voting guide and, and, and use them in, uh, you know, in, uh, in tandem. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the archives here. Click on archive right here. The News View Online archives articles from as early as April, 2008. That's 14 years of News View Online articles. Seven articles a week, 48 weeks out of the year. You're never gonna run out of information. In addition to the article itself, the archive has full story audio all the way back to 2009 full story and sentence by sentence audio with photos and graphics dating back to June of 2015. And the online exercises that accompany the articles go back to September of 2015. So uh, like I said, you could, you could search keywords and topics from the voting guide. Um, let me think of one. Uh, okay, election, for example. We'll type election into the search and click, and we get 225 results. Let's see, who won? We may not know election results for weeks. I remember that. Uh, Iraqis voting for a strong central government. Early voters changing the presidential race. Postal services service changes delivery concerns and lots more there. Uh, what else? Election, how about um, debate? I remember that one from the vocabulary and it was in the guide, 182 results. What you should know about the presidential debates is one of the past articles. After a national embarrassment, future debates are in doubt. Prison inmates defeat debate team from, okay, that's unrelated to the uh, primaries, you know, right? national elections and such, but also about debates. So we could have students skim and scan to see, you know, is this what we're looking for? Trump versus Biden. All kinds of great stuff here in the archives. And not just, uh, not just here for the voting guide, but how about for our roundup article, right? Um, using our roundup article, you could challenge students to try to find related stories or specific information. So if I type in Queen Elizabeth, and click 35 results. Queen Elizabeth II serves 60 years on the throne. A painting will stay in Britain. The weekly news roundup, right, has been added already to our archives. And more, here's Queen Elizabeth marks 70 years on the throne. Lots of stuff here. I remember uh, inflation was one of the other stories from this week's roundup. Eight results there. Now, sticker shock, gas, food, just about everything costs more. Food prices rise around the world. But, you know, what's a tooth worth? The tooth fairy's average is $3.70. I got a dime when I was a kid. And yes, I'm dating myself, I know. All right, one more. Let's, let's see what's under fast food and I'll wrap this up. You can click on fast food because fast food workers was in our roundup this week. Not so fast. Italians object to minister's approval of the McItaly burger. Right? Don't blame fast food. Mummies had heart disease. Lots of, lots of cool stories. So the archives, yet another fantastic feature. Right? 
and that's what I've got. I know I'm out of time here. It's 1230. But um, let me just mention our September special again. It's posted on our website. In fact, let me return to our website. Uh, hey, here we are. You'll find that it's on our website right here, the September special. And here on our website, you can find all our resources, contact information for your state sales representative. Uh, you can request a quote. You can order online, contact customer service.